Beloved, you are listening to Grace Life Komi Podcast, a platform commissioned by God to raise men into completeness in Christ Jesus. We believe that you will be blessed beyond measure as you give yourself wholly to this divinely inspired teaching. Through God's servant Pastor Chimdi Ohahuna. Grace to you. Jesus is Lord. Welcome back. The spirit is your life because of righteousness. We don't want to go on because of righteousness. We want to stay on the purpose of this this, this conference. The spirit is your life. That means for the new creation, our spirit is not our life. It is the Holy Spirit that is our life in our spirit that gives us life. (laughs) <laughs> so it's not enough for you to say I am a spirit as a new creation. You see, we started off by understanding that we are spirits as a new creation. You know what I'm saying? Now it's not enough for you to say I'm a spirit as a new creation. You need to understand what when, what kind of a spirit you are. You need to understand as a new creation, you are a spirit life creation. The spirit is your life. The Bible said the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. <laughs> <laughs> he bears witness because he is the life of our spirit. The Holy Spirit is the life of the spirit man of the new creation. That is why you cannot afford to live a life that is not sensitive to the Holy Spirit. That means you are living dead, sir. You are living a dead life because the Holy Spirit is the life. He is the life. He is the very life of our spirit man. Our spirit man can be a latter. Can, can see? Let me tell you, the, our spirit man can override our soul and our body so long as it's, 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 it's alive by the spirit, Holy Spirit. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, this, you know, it says, A merry heart dwelt well like mercy, but a broken spirit dryer the bone. What does it mean by a broken spirit? When we look at that in the Old Testament, we feel that, okay, David was just talking about, you know, from the Old Testament point of view. It means that it is possible to have a broken spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? Why can a spirit be broken? A spirit can be broken when the spirit is not made alive by the Holy Spirit. I get what I'm saying. Even for the new creation, when you begin to when you begin to allow your spirit to flow with every other thing other than staying alive, you begin to have broken spirits and it begins to dry the bone. When you begin to allow your spirit listen to the voice of anxiety, the voice of fear, the voice of all other things that the devil is trying to bring, what is happening? You are you are allowing your spirit get broken by the factors around it. So a new creation can have a broken spirit. Yes, you can. Why? Because your spirit man is different from your the Holy Spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah, but the Holy Spirit indwells your spirit man to give your spirit man life. If the Holy Spirit is not in your spirit man, your spirit man will be dead. Are we together? Yeah. So when your spirit is not in alliance with the Holy Spirit, what happened? You discover that the spirit becomes broken. It becomes broken. But once it's alliance with the Holy Spirit, once the Holy Spirit is his source, once the Holy Spirit is his life, you know what? The spirit becomes is not actually alive, it's the spirit living through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit living through the Spirit. So for the new creation, let me say this way: the spirit of man cannot live without the Holy Spirit. So without the Holy Spirit, the spirit of man is actually a dead spirit. It's called a depraved spirit. The unbelievers have spirit. Yes, they have spirit. But what happens to their spirit? Their spirit is depraved. It's called a dead spirit. Those spirit don't die, yes. But the term to use for a dead spirit is actually a depraved spirit. Why? Because it's only the Holy Spirit that gives life to the spirit. So a spirit that is devoid of the Holy Spirit is a depressed spirit, is actually a dead spirit. And that spirit is not just broken, it's, it's shattered. <laughs> it's not just shattered, it's destroyed. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, a dead spirit does not need to get broken, it is destroyed, it's a destroyed spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? But it's only a living spirit that can be broken. Are you getting what I'm saying? But when the spirit is broken, what happens? The Holy Spirit can always mend the spirit back. That's why fellowship with the Holy Spirit is not just something you'd do once in a while. It is a lifeline. 
is a continuous act. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Study the word of God. Meditate on the word of God day and night. Why? Because by doing this, what happens? You are you are keeping your spirit alive by the Holy Spirit. So for the new creation, the spirit is your life. It's your life. You don't have a life. The spirit is your life. So when I say Christian say, uh, it's my life, you know you are you are messed up somewhere. It's my life. You are messed up somewhere. It's my life. You you missed it somewhere. For the new creation, new creation don't have a life. The spirit is his life. <laughs> so this this other spirit coco people. No, we have, we, when we got born again, we became spiritual. We are not trying to be spiritual. Say so stop being spiritual. No, we are not trying to be spiritual. We are not spirit coco. We are not trying to be spiritual. We are, is our life. The spirit is our life. Are you getting know what I'm saying? I don't need to do for me to be in the spirit. No, they say let's get. I remember somebody say when when, when, let's, when when they want to pray, say let's get into the spirit. Where have you been since? <laughs> you have been, you have been <laughs> Let's let's get into the spirit. What where have you been since? The Bible says if we live in the spirit, let us therefore now walk in the spirit. We are made. That's where we live because in Him we live and move and have our being. Why? Because He is our life. So if you have to enter into the spirit, that means you die and you get you get alive. You die. <laughs> so before you enter into the spirit, that means you were dead. <laughs> That means you are seen at this moment, and the next moment you are born again. Because it's when you say what that time that's when you get born again. Uh, that means before that you are depraved spirit. Uh-uh, I don't understand what you are saying. That means you are being sacrical. <laughs> sacrical salvation. Here and there salvation. You are born again, you are not born again, you are born again, you are not born again. We don't enter into the spirit. We, we are, that is our, the spirit is our life. Let me say what. We don't live in the spirit. The spirit lives us. He lives through us. Because he lives through us, in him we now live and move and have our being. He lives through us. See, <laughs> sometimes when they say let us live in the spirit, it puts the responsibility on us. We have to live in the spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? But let's get it this way. The spirit it lives through us. If you are conscious of the fact that you have to live in the spirit, sometimes you can live in and you can live out. You know what I'm saying? That's why some Christians say, uh, we are, we are, let's, let's, we are, let's get into the spirit now. Yeah. So it's obvious that there are times to live in, there are times to live out. But now, if you're conscious of the spirit is your life, are you getting what I'm saying? You, you know that you don't live in and live out. He's living through you. Praise God forevermore. From the verse of scripture above, we see that a man ceases to have a natural and normal life the moment he gets born again. No more natural life. No more normal life. So self depend is a lot to me, but usually say we are humans and I say I'm sorry. Oh Lord, I'm sorry. See, sometimes we just say something but because of revelation bankruptcy. And we don't want to accept the truth that this is who we are. Because we see so many natural factors limiting us. And so we are so moved by five senses that we don't want to be moved by the spirit sense. So we just want to just let's flow. But you see, flowing is not the way for the new creation. See what flowing has done to the church over the years. We have flowed and lost our st- our place. We have flowed and lost our stand. Yes, I know it's not easy. I'm talking from experience. Yeah. We have listeners online. We have followers. But I know that it's not many people that listen to these teachings. Because these are not teachings for the everyday Sunday Christian. Are you get what I'm saying? But the grace of God will commence um, um, a fellowship. And what I teach in fellowship is not what I teach in these meetings. Uh, before you come to this kind of meeting, my brother, you must be ready for it. It's not everyday Sunday Christian that takes this kind of thing. If you give everyday Sunday Christian this kind of thing, they will tell you, I beg, Next Sunday, we are not coming again. Say, so, why? Well, you have given us the teaching for five months in one service, so we are not coming again. Or they will tell you, we are still trying to assimilate and understand what we are saying. So, from the very, uh, I say, well, wait, well, most of the time we have heard this thing, you are spirit, you are spirit, you are spirit, you are spirit. We just end there as we are spirit, but we've not understood the place that is the spirit that is the life of our spirit. <laughs> uh, it's the Holy Spirit that is the life of our spirit. So it's beyond us. As I heard of you saying we are spirit, it's beyond us being spirits. It's about the Holy Spirit being the life of our spirit. So when the Holy Spirit is not at work, we are actually depraved at that time. That is why we don't go in the spirit and go out of the spirit. No, we live in the spirit. Why? Because it's the spirit that is the life. We live. It's just where we live. We just live. But we have a generation of Christians that get into the spirit and get out of the spirit. When they come to the gathering of saints, they are in the spirit. When they come out of the garden of saints, they are not in the spirit. We have a generation of Christians who have some scriptures that are meant for church service and some that are meant for workplace. Come on. 
The moment a man gets born again, he becomes a new creature. And this makes him have the life called the spirit. There is a life. There are different kinds of life. There is a natural life. There is a spiritual life. And there is the life called the spirit. <laughs> Three kinds of life. I think they will do a teaching on that when the time comes. Three kinds of life. The natural life. The spiritual life. The spiritual life is what the natural life is what hap- the life that hap- happens in this natural environment. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's your body, you know. The spiritual life is the life that plays in the spirit realm. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's what happens to you when you get born again. You have become a spirit. Your spirit has been born. Are you getting what I'm saying? But now there is life called the spirit. The spirit himself is a life of his own. And he is the life of the new creature. <laughs> oh, Shadabadasha. This means that the spirit becomes comes the life in the new creation at new birth. See, this revelation, it may sound very simple, but I've never known it like this before. I've never known it like this before. I've only known that if any man be Christ, a new creature, all things are passed, they build everything that become new. Oh, we are when we get born again, our spirit gets born again, our soul is under is being renewed, and our body never gets born again. I just knew that we're spirit, we're spiritual, but I never knew that that the, the spirit, that my the created spirit has a life, and that life is called the spirit. <laughs> so let me say that is my spirit has a spirit. And that spirit that my spirit has is called the spirit life, which is the person of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> That's why I said this kind of teachings are not for everyday, everyday Christians. Come and give us the microwave teaching. Let's go. It does, the teaching does not have to be long to be strong meat. It doesn't have to be complicated to be strong meat. It can be as simple as this but remain strong meat. If this reality becomes our understanding, if this revelation becomes our reality, then we'll be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit than we are today. Some nights ago, I was talking to the Lord. I said, God, I, 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 I'm Pastor. We're talk, I, I, I woke up and I said, Okay, this idea, this idea. the ideas are happening. I said, My dear, she was happy. But not quite long after that, it's like, We saw that the ideas were no longer fitting. And I was like, I, I was actually thinking that this thing is not fitting. In fact, she told me that she said, This is not fitting. I was like, What's happening here? What's happening? And uh, through the night, I'm talking to the Lord. I'm talking to the Lord. I'm talking to the Lord. I'm talking and 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 talking to the Lord. Why have I come to this point where I don't want to just make a step or take a step like that? We told him before we came to this mission field, we played in our previous mission field for about one year. Lord, where do we go to? And God brought us here and then challenged them that after this first location, the Lord, where do we turn to? For about one year, where do we turn to? The Lord told us where to turn to. We came here and God started saying it's Hebron. And I'm like, oh, why? Do, why? And now, God, I don't want to just make a step like that. Why do I take time doing this and that? Experience has taught me to be more spiritual than physical. But now, with this understanding, it is not about even being spiritual. It's about about what the life of my spirit ruling the spirit life which is the life of my spirit leading through so i must align myself to the spirit life which is the life of my spirit and if christians can have this my god we may we will just be we'll just be soaring in life praise god forevermore the spirit here is in the capital letter so it refers to the person of the holy spirit who said that before this implies that the holy spirit is the life of the new creature not just the human spirit of the man are you getting what i'm saying it's not just your human spirit that's like no it's the holy spirit that is the life of your human spirit that is not your life so this thing is bigger than your human spirit sir it's bigger than my human spirit it's about the spirit life and see we are trusting god that in this conference an awareness of the spirit life will dawn on us so much that mashana bada, everything that looks like walls that have been barricading us from free access to the spirit life, they will fall in this conference. Can we pray the language of the spirit for a little while? Radoshki balika sundra batiba late shedeba. Walls are falling. The spirit life is the real life. Yana moria katoja. Ezizi kavi brukoti balatita. Makun libra ituli ke skubra atayata. Ma ingedens kubra etelegatush kanima lakadoja. Eti 
kaskimbra ontosh kibra entele ketosha madinda dibra katosh kebete kedikaro kotosha ekekerike rebete balotunde ketasha madidi barando kuri baraka deketosha makite katukri kita barunke te pushande rekatosa etitikri kiti palaka te baroko totonta imbrenga ndende ndekedekedekedekedekedekedekedekedekotukotosha imbrenga deket amdurukudukudukudukudukudukudukudukudukudusha makuru bokuru bakara bokuru bakara bokuru bakara kintunda enketete Rakrikotolobodosha, Makindonski brata pico di braketosha, Rakete kinskobra onteketesha, Makideke toke leke toko leke toko lotusha, Rekete bedeshke bede leke dosha, Rapala babadosha, Reketumbe leke tosha, Repete ketosha brakatosa, Imbrakatosha bede leke tosha, Rakatosha tanita latasha, In the name of Jesus. We pray in the language of the spirit for you to have, but let's sit down. Now, while, I was, while, while we pray, the Holy Ghost began to explain something to me. Uh, 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 the Bible is speaking, it says the spirit of a prophet is subject to the prophet. Now, Paul was speaking there when he has to do with prophecy, and he was like, you don't just go and, you know, prophesy running here while like that. And he says the spirit of a prophet is subject to the prophet. The spirit he's talking there is not the Holy Spirit. It's the human spirit of the prophet. That means that the human spirit of the of, of, of a new creation can be subjected by the new creation. You can control your human spirit. <laughs> it means that even when the spirit of the spirit life, the spirit, the life of the spirit is tra- is communicating a message to the sp- human spirit, the the prophet can control it because it is the human spirit that is to communicate it to his soul and the soul through the body. Are you get what I'm saying? Now, so the human spirit is controllable. Are you get what I'm saying? It's controllable. You can control your spirit. The reason, this is the reason why the human spirit can be. I'm talking of a new creation. That's the reason why the human spirit of a new creation can be broken because you can control it. It's a level of understanding. You can control it. That's the reason why the Lord can tell you something that you can choose not to say because you can control the human spirit. Because when the spirit is speaking, it's speaking to your spirit, not to you, your, your, your soul. But your soul receives the message from your spirit and your soul can shut the spirit up. It can control it. Are you getting what I'm saying? And that's the reason why you see a lot of Christians living below the spirit life. Why? Because they have been able to subject their spirit wrongly. And so the spirit life cannot flow through their spirit to their souls and then to their body. (laughs) But you see, this conference is a call to remove the barricades we have put around our spirit man that is preventing our spirit man from what? Having free access to the spirit life and then having the spirit the spirit man having free access to our body and soul because you cannot afford to be living one minute you are alive another minute you are what dead one minute you are in the spirit another minute you are out of the spirit no you are the you cannot you cannot afford to live that i know some of the christians believe in that is when a gift or place that's when they are in the spirit so a word of knowledge gift has come that's when you're in the spirit no we actually the, the spirit life is continuous we live in the spirit continuously are you get what i'm saying yes. it's continuous so you don't need a word of knowledge gift before you know that you're in the spirit you live there the life is just your life <laughs> Praise God forevermore. The Holy Spirit is not only God and a person, He's also life. Are you getting what I'm saying? He's not only God and a person, He's also life. He's also life. He's also life. He's emphatically speaking, the new creature does not and cannot have a life outside the Holy Spirit. That's the truth. We've said that before. Outside the Holy Spirit, the new creature is a broken spirit. It's actually a, dep- it's, it's actually a depraved, He has chosen to just be a depraved spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? Outside the Holy Spirit, the new creature is dead. And can a new creature be dead? No, you are not permitted to be dead. But just that you have refused to stay alive. How can I say? So that's why you don't say we well, yeah, get into the spirit and we get out of it. No, the Bible never says let's enter into the spirit. The Bible says if we live. <laughs> it is a let us enter in and 
enter out and come out. No. He said, if we leave, the spirit is your life. It's your life. So you cannot say, no, I'm choosing to leave. I'm choosing not to leave. Are you getting what I'm saying? No, 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 no. You don't do that. Praise God forevermore. So is it possible for a new creature to be depraved? No, it's not possible to be depraved. So if as it were, as it uh, by right, it's not possible to be depraved. And why then do we see that we live outside the spirit? It is because we have not trained our spirit man to know that its life is not his own. It's actually the spirit that is his life. And we have not trained our soul, we've not understood this revelation. So we cannot accept the flow from the spirit of God through our spirit to our soul. So the purpose of this revelation, the purpose of this reality is to make us conscious that it's not even our spirit that is our life. It is the spirit of God that is our life. I know if this consciousness is there, you know what's going to happen? You can never go astray in life. Yeah, because you see, my spirit is telling me, no, my brother, your spirit is telling you, uh, you are still not sure. You know what I'm saying? But when you say the spirit is ministering to me, then you know that you are aligned, you have aligned. Because it's the spirit life that ministers to your spirit, and then your spirit ministers to your soul. Are we together? So you cannot be a Christian and live outside the spirit life. No, you can't. It's not possible. It's impossible. See, the reason why we're having a lot of... As I was talking uh, with pastors, I was, I was like, I don't see... Nowadays, we don't understand. People just put Bible there and they wrongly divide scriptures, scatter scriptures. And when you are rightly dividing scripture, they begin to fight you for rightly dividing scripture. Why is this so? Because we don't have this kind of teachings everywhere. We don't have this kind of teachings. You can't get this kind of teaching everywhere. That the spirit is my life. Not even my spirit man. The spirit is the life of my spirit man that is now my life. When that becomes your reality, you can't live anyhow now. You can't live anyhow. The spirit does not live anyhow. So you can't live anyhow. Are we together? And the reason for this is that the new creature was conceived and born of the Holy Spirit as seen in the verses of scripture we have looked at above. John chapter 3 verse 6 and 8 and 1 John 5 verse 1 and 5. The new creation was conceived and born of the Holy Spirit. We've looked at those in that verses before. That was the same way Jesus was conceived and born of the Holy Spirit through Mary. The new creation was conceived and born of the Holy Spirit. The same way Jesus was conceived and born of the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 1 verse 35 says, And the angel answered and said unto him, the Holy Spirit Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the higher shall overshadow thee. That's the Holy Spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. The Holy Spirit conceived Jesus in the womb of Mary. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He conceived Jesus in the womb of Mary. Are you getting me? All right, now. And it was by the power of the Holy Spirit that Mary also better Jesus. Are we together? All right. This makes us understand that God the Father, through the Holy Spirit, conceived Jesus Christ in the womb of Mary and bettered him through Mary in the animal shed. Same way God the Father, through his Holy Spirit, conceived the new creation in the heart of Jesus and bettered him through the side of Jesus on the cross. This death happened when Jesus' side was pierced and it brought forth water and blood. That was when the new creation was born. It was on the cross. When the side of Jesus was pressed, pierced, and it brought forth water and blood, it was on the cross. That was when the new creation was born. <laughs> Amen. This blood and water came out because the heart of Jesus ruptured on the cross to bet the new creation. Jesus died of a, um, 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 of, of a ruptured heart. Are you getting what I'm saying? The heart ruptured. And when it ruptured, the new creation was born. The heart tore. And when it tore, the new creature was born. It opened. When it opened, the new creature was born. That is why blood and water filled his side. And you get what I'm saying? Because his heart opened up and blood and water gushed out. What passes through the heart? Is it not blood and water? Stored up in his side. I believe that the Roman soldier who pierced his side notice a swelling there. You must have noticed a swelling, a bulging. So what is this bulging? Pierced it and blood and water came out. John chapter 19 verse 34 says, but one of the soldiers with his spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. That was a sign of a ruptured heart. That was why they didn't break his bones because they saw blood and water come out of his side. For blood and water to come out of his side meant that the heart had given way. The heart had ruptured. The pressure on the heart began began from Gethsemane. The blood started coming out from his epidermis. It came out from his head when the crown of tongues came. 
but depression mounted on the heart. Why? Because there was in the cross for those hours he stayed, it was the labor period of the betting of the church. And when he betted the church, he said, It is finished. But they cried with a loud voice of victory, It is finished. And he gave up the ghost. When they came, they noticed the side, they pierced it, blood and water. That was they, they knew that he had died. Because the only reason why blood and water were gathered by the side is that the heart had what ruptured that opened up why because the new creation had been born from his heart this is the reason why sons of god are those who are led by the spirit of god why because the spirit of god is their life romans 8 verse 14 for men are led by the spirit of god same are what the sons of god the heavenly father gives life while the mother incubates and gets life. The father, being the giver of life, is also seen as the owner of life, although with limits. Praise God forevermore. We see this in the fact that Abraham almost took the life of Isaac, his son, which God had to stop him from doing because God is against that. Genesis 22, verse 10 says, And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. The Holy Spirit gave the life of the new creation to Jesus. He incubated the life of the new creation in Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? As such, it is his life and he owns it. The Holy Spirit is the father of the new creation. He incubated, he he, 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 he um, implanted, he conceived the new creation in the heart of Jesus. Now, when Jesus was in Gethsemane, it was the labor pain of the new creation that was heavy on him. I get what I'm saying. He was carrying labor pain. It's time to give birth. For hours, he was on Gethsemane for three hours. And then the trial, and then the scourging. All those were the labor pain. They were building up on his heart. Building up for those who have gone to labor, they know that the thing builds up. Is that not so? It's like pressure is mounting, pressure is mounting until boom, the child comes out. Pressure, it was a build up of pressure. The same way labor built up, it built up from Gethsemane. The brain was building up, building up, building up, building up, and the labor pain, the pressure was on his heart because that was where the, the, the new creation was, was, was conceived, and that was where the new creature was be, um, 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 developed to maturity in him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, and that was where the new creature was to be born from. Are you getting what I'm saying? <laughs> Jesus incubated the new creature and gave birth to the new creature on the cross from his side. So the, the, the womb of the new creature was the heart of Jesus. The, the canal for the birth of the new creature was the side of Jesus. He incubated the new creature in his heart and gave birth to the new creature from his side. We'll be looking at the side tomorrow. Praise God forevermore. It was the same place from which the first Adam gave birth to Eve. Uh, if you look at Genesis chapter um, 2, we see it there that the, the first Adam gave birth to Eve from his side. It says, and the Lord God, Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 or 22, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept and took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord had taken from the man made him a woman and brought unto the man. So he slept and he took one of his ribs and from his side and did what? And closed the flesh. So the same um, place where the first Adam gave birth to Eve from was the same place where the last Adam gave birth to the new creation from. The new creation, the womb of Eve, the womb of, of the new creation was the heart of Jesus. And the birth canal of the new creation was the side of Jesus. The heart had to open, had to rupture for the new creation to come out. And that blood and water, we'll be looking at the blood and water tomorrow. We've seen it before, but we'll look at it briefly tomorrow. Where the signs that somebody has been born. Because in the birthing of a woman, water first gives way, and water breaks, and then blood comes out when she's giving birth. It's a normal birth process. So that shows that somebody, a child, has been born. The blood and the water coming out was a sign to show that a person had been born. The bulging of the side was the soldiers knew that there was something about this. When they saw the blood and water, they knew that his heart had ruptured, that means he had died. He had given up the ghost. And so they were fine. They came down, he had given up the ghost. He gave birth to the church by through his side. Their book makes us understand that the life of the new creature is that of the Holy Spirit. As such, the Holy Spirit is his life. This is why the new creature lives the spirit life. 
open your voice and just pray in the language of the Spirit for the Lord. Now is your moment of salvation. If you are yet to make the Lord Jesus Christ, your Lord and personal Savior, we request that you say this prayer along with many others now. Say this words, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, I repent of my sins, and ask that you forgive my sins. I believe that you shed your blood on the cross, died for my sins, and rose again in the third day. Today, I invite you into my life today. Wash me by your blood, make me your own, and till eternity be my Lord and personal Savior, thank you Lord Jesus, in Jesus' precious name. Beloved, we will like to introduce to you one of our latest book releases. Titled, The Greatest Word from the Greatest Man, authored by Chimdi Ohahuna, this book unveils the greatest word that ever mattered to the destiny of mankind. The truth of the redemptive work of Christ is presented in its simple and astoundingly profound format. The greatest word from the greatest man is especially good for new additions to the family of God. That is, babes in Christ. It offers deep, clear, and simple knowledge of God's love, the God-man Jesus and his purpose, the dead man owed God and its settlement. It is highly recommended for every believer in Christ. Order a copy today via Amazon. For your love gift of any amount to Grace Life Kami Podcast, kindly use any of our giving channels available, to give in dollars. You can send to Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. Account number, 033-154-551-2013. Swift code, M, B, G, H, G, H, A, C, to give in CDs. Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. You can send to account number, 033-254-551-2017. To give in Naira, you can send to Ecobank Nigeria, account number 554-102-0592. Also, for further enquiries, you can call us on plus 233-54594-7132. OR, send us an email via chimdiohahuna ministry at gmail.com today remain ever blessed we believe you were blessed listening to this teaching from god's word may your soul remain ever refreshed and revived we would love to hear your praise report today beloved remain connected to grace life Comey podcast jesus is lord